And they're having a drink too, Tristan. Look at that reflection. It's like glass this morning. Now, even though I said earlier the wind is just starting to pick up when you're down at Vuyatela Dam, you're very lucky. The wind, of course, is something that you're sheltered from, but they're very cold and they look a little bit on the nervous side. I don't know if that's because they're worried about predators or if they're worried about getting stuck in the mud. That's definitely something that the animals are going to have to keep at the back of their mind coming into the dry season when we don't get rain and everything starts drying up. Something that we often see which is quite sad and it's typically at this time of the year is animals getting stuck in the clay and the drying up mud wallows and drying up dams. So you saw that in Palo that's just finished having a drink. It was as stretched out as it possibly could be trying to get a sip without having to put too much of its body in the water. Now, I don't know what these impala are doing in front of us. Check out the sip, Seb, the middle of them, tongue tied today. They're just on the dam wall. Now, they're coming up from the drainage line and they're coming here. So I don't know if they're going down to drink, but they seem slightly hesitant. One even gave a snort, but that might be an impatient ram trying to edge the girls on. But it's always good to be cautious. We always talk about this coming down to the water's edge. You can see that, that female right in front. She's taking the time to stop, to listen, to smell, because she's going through a fairly thick spot. You see that? And it's quite open at the moment. But that little animal pathway that she wants to go down, she needs to make sure that they, she will. She actually doesn't know if there's anything on the other side or not. And even when you're walking and you have to come through a corridor like that, it's quite risky because you don't know what you could bump into on the other side. But there she comes, very cautious. So she must be quite an experienced girl. She knows exactly what needs to be done to try and keep her herd nice and safe. But it isn't just the girls, we'll see the rest. They're gonna come running down now and hopefully give us a beautiful sight of them of them drinking. The so rams are on their way too. It's quite nice. So here we go. We've got the dominant females, the ones that we'll be breeding. We've got a couple of youngsters from last year. Well, sorry, from the beginning of this year, the end of last year. And then you start to get the older rams and then the big mature rams are also pushing in from the rear. And I think it's, you can see different types of social organizations depending on the time of the year. I don't know if anyone else has seen that with Impala. Obviously during the rutting season you'll see, you see all the females huddled closely together with of course a big ram and then we go and we see the bachelor groups of dominant rams that potentially could fight for a spot to mate with the girls and then you even see smaller bachelor groups with even younger males hanging around in that beautiful frame they're all coming down for an early morning drink now because today is going to be quite uh, quite hot of course they will drink in the morning They'll drink in the afternoon again. We often see the impalas coming down to graze where the grass is slightly greener. Now, I believe there's some questions coming through about Votomi. And unfortunately, I don't know if I can answer any of them because I, I haven't got a clue. I also only saw a post for the first time last night. Now, I've only seen Votomi once, and that was at Cheetah Plains. Now I've only seen Votomi once and that was at Cheetah Plains anymore. We don't really hear as to what goes on so much. So I haven't even heard from some of the Nkoro guides that they hadn't seen him for a while. There's actually no mention of it at all and, and normally we chat about these things. Now whether it is him, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the carcass, so I personally cannot confirm or deny anything, unfortunately. And I know it sounds like I'm sitting on the fence, it's just because I have a lack of information. But I mean, I'm sure Tristan and I will discuss this at breakfast, we actually haven't even chatted about it. And we'll see if we can get any images and, and find out and see if we've got a couple of mates at work at Marla Marla, maybe they can give us some insight. But again, it's like the incident with that hyena. on. But we'll look, we don't know who it was, we can only speculate. So we'll just have to wait and see. But unfortunately, with Fotomi going that side into Mala Mala, if he did sort of push further south, it would be a very risky move for a young male leopard. That area is filled with big, strong 
males and even there are lots of females that wouldn't take too kindly to him encroaching on their territory it could have, again it could have been natural causes maybe something like a snake bite maybe he got sick if it is him of course we don't know we can only speculate and that's the hardest thing but look at this amazing scene let's appreciate what we've got the life that we've got in front of us right now look at all those impala and without Every single one of these impala, we would not have leopards, we would not have lions, we would not have hyenas, we would not have cheetah, we would not have any of those animals. Because let's be honest, impala are one of the most important antelope in Africa. They provide a food, a food source for so many different, so many different predators out here. Isn't this great? But we'll stick with these impala for a little bit longer. It seems as though Tristan has managed to catch that raptor that got away.